Baldur's Gate 3, an upcoming single and multiplayer RPG epic from the highly acclaimed Baldur's Gate franchise. With developers Lorien Studios at the helm following on from their incredibly well-received Divinity series, it's no wonder RPG fans are keeping a keen eye on Baldur's Gate 3 as it goes through development, alongside its early access release available on PC. And today we do just that, as we take a deep dive into the game's early access offerings, to uncover what the game has to offer its players today, as well as what we can expect from the title that is overflowing with potential. Darling, I thought you'd never ask. My name's Mitch Mannix, and this is Baldur's Gate 3, an RPG game changer. It's worth mentioning right at the top that with games such as this, the story is the real experience, so I won't be covering any of the game's major story beats following the introduction. As always, our journey begins at the character creator, and so far Baldur's Gate 3 has a decent amount on offer to craft your hero, allowing for creations such as SoundCloud rapper Lord Farquaad and Party Time Grinch. However, with the game with such high focus on roleplaying, it would be nice to see a bit more customization around the characters' faces, I feel, in addition to the predefined options at its full release. But of course, we need a hero for this adventure. And with that, let me introduce you to the very man himself, L'Oreal Diablo. A legendary tiefling that does not let his plain-touched ancestry stop him from having a drop-dead gorgeous hairstyle at all times. With our hero confirmed, we jump curling tongs first into the game's story, which is set up by an absolutely jaw-dropping cutscene showcasing a number of the game's races from the Dungeons & Dragons world, before being thrown down into the game's introduction as a captive on a strange ship looking for a way to escape. It only takes a few steps into the game to see its integration with the mechanics from the Dungeons & Dragons tabletop game, and how they are utilized to enhance the role-playing experience. A great-sounding narrator walks you through the game's events and interactions, further building the world and acting as an in-game dungeon master of sorts. Warding ruins. You feel them drawing energy from the console near to the pod. L'Oreal Diablo works his way through the disturbing sights of the Under Siege alien craft, battling its various inhabitants and recruiting some of the other captives along the way, all culminating in an escape that continues Baldur's Gate 3's feeling of incredibly grand and high production value feeling storytelling. Ah, my hair! Now fully unleashed into the world proper, what is immediately striking is the attention to detail within the game's landscapes. Developers Larian Studios have raised the bar on even their incredibly high standards with what is currently showcased in the game's early access experience. The environments feel thick and alive, and bodes well to see such a cornerstone of a great RPG experience already looking so outstanding. Questing through to the game's first major settlement, meeting a whole host of interesting characters on the way, it's clear that the attention to detail has also been applied to the characters themselves with NPC animations for specific dialogue. With the Outlander rot cleansed, and the grove forever shrouded. And subtle facial animations, such as L'Oreal Diablo seemingly getting a hair stuck in his mouth during a conversation. What happened out there? Each NPC is voiced exceptionally well, acting to further immerse the player, feeling like more of a movie experience than one typically associated with games. We've both got bugs. We've both got bugs tickling our grey matter. Working our way through the current early access offering of roughly 10 to 20 hours of main and side quest content, we get a chance to experience the game's turn-based combat, which already feels like a highly engaging, incredibly satisfying experience. You bow. Oh. Some amazing looking spell effects and combat sounds. to enhance the customizable and vast offering of spells and abilities that I imagine will even give those that consider themselves not so much of a fan of turn-based systems a reason to reassess their stance on it. Interactive environmental objects are again a great addition to the combat and for keeping players on their toes. That's a boulder. What does... why there is a boulder? Thank you, Captain Obvious. Mm-hmm. Pulling down nearby statues and smashing enemies off cliffs just add to the strategy element of engagements, rewarding those that exploit every possible advantage during encounters. An example of this I found when pitting myself up against a particularly challenging enemy leader and his lackeys. After a number of failures, decided to explore the surroundings for anything that could give me an edge. L'Oreal Diablo and co scaled the rafters in search of an advantage, and finally found a room filled with explosive barrels, and returned to the problem with a whole new explosive solution. No. Game's over. 
Utilizing chosen abilities alongside the world itself to overcome challenges gives the game a hugely rewarding feeling, while also meaning that progression through the game feels far more methodical and impactful when compared to simply steamrolling through enemy encampments in a whirlwind of death with hardly any time to really take in the surroundings. The game immersing the player in its environments through requiring them to become all too familiar with its intricacies, with quests also being able to be completed in a multitude of ways, both how the combat encounters play out and how the quests conclude feel like they are really truly part of your character's unique journey, as opposed to simply going through the motions. For those less familiar with either Dungeons & Dragons or turn-based combat systems like me with the former, the game can be a bit of a culture shock with so many new systems to understand and utilize, and it did take a bit of time for me to begin to really get the most out of Baldur's Gate 3, but I have to say that once I got some momentum, it felt all the more rewarding for it, beginning to turn the tables on foes that had previously been smashing me to bits. And you too can play Whack-A-Mole with Blue Man Group Dwarf Necromancers by dropping a like on the video if you enjoy it and letting me know your thoughts down in the comments. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel for all things RPG as it really helps out small YouTubers like me. Another element carried over from the tabletop RPG is the attribute checks, which are rolled for to decide the outcome of conversations or decisions. This system also plays directly into any builds or player abilities that boost these stats, allowing for strategic players to again give themselves an advantage during gameplay, but not always. As being true to its Dungeons & Dragons roots, the player's adventure can sometimes come to a grim end, all with a roll of a dice. I, of course, kept well away from such unfortunate outcomes, and totally didn't hit a game over screen after being forced into literally kissing an enemy that I was attempting to destroy. Okay, I'm understanding this a little bit more now. Going in, I thought that some decisions and checks being dictated by a dice roll would bother me more, but I think that the game implementing ways to impact the random chance, such as the previously mentioned abilities and builds, as well as the inspiration system, which gives you limited chances to re-roll, helps to give something to those that are far more familiar with purely choice-based outcomes in their RPG experiences. A real benefit of the D&D-based system is the sheer amount of replayability it grants with it. Baldur's Gate 3 so far has shown that it is teeming with branching paths and alternative outcomes for its playthroughs. There are 9 races and 10 classes currently available in the Early Access, with subclasses and alternative dialogue options and outcomes available depending on which race you play. Without drifting into spoiler territory, I'll just say that the 10 to 20 hours offered in the Early Access release as it stands could easily be upward of 100 hours of content, given the game's replayability. Hold up lads, this one might be more we bargained for. I know, just look at that hair. The game, even now in early access, offers multiplayer to round up a full party of four for a true RPG adventure together with friends, which as you can imagine adds even more to the game's fun factor, as well as shifting up combat with a co-op twist of working together to crush your enemies. Your next turn, I'll make a little bit bigger. <laughs> yes, you are a giant, a giant dwarf, which is really, just, what the heck? setting up sequences together to chain attacks with devastating results. All party members can initiate conversations to progress the plot, with the game including a voting system on dialogue options to keep the group dynamic even within the plot progression. And on the subject of party members, Baldur's Gate 3 leans into providing not just more interaction, but far more depth in its NPC party members. Everyone I encountered in the early access version interested me and brought something unique to the table with their personalities. The choice to have a far more intimate feeling conversation system with party members works wonders at bringing them to life and placing them within the player's story. By the hell's sex, my dear. A night of passion. And not with you, just to be clear. I mean, can you imagine? <laughs> Ugh. No. Your companions will even talk to each other during your adventures, and even make passive-aggressive comments on your actions during gameplay, as seen here during L'Oreal Diablo's attempt to steal from his fallen allies. Wrong me how? Oh, so, murder? Or theft? Killing is good. It calls the weak. But theft would be paid for painfully, a thousand times over. For those wondering, the Early Access release is of course not without a litany of bugs that are expected during its pre-release, and although more often than not, far from game-breaking, do act to pull the player out of the highly immersive feeling the game is so masterfully crafting. Gems such as L'Oreal Diablo feeling the effects of his 105th Espresso, a bard's rather disturbing behaviour at one of the game's camps, and sometimes the game's dialogue cutting out completely. He was defeated before he could launch an attack. Oh, it's crapped out. Don't worry, mate, I've got you. But he was defeated before he could launch an attack. 
Being a druid's not as good as people make it out to be, you know. Have you ever had to wipe your ass on a badger? And it'll be down to you as a player whether you'll be happy experiencing a slightly less immersive experience due to the game's unfinished state. Which brings me to as a package if it's worth jumping into the game's early access rather than holding on for the full release. Well, that depends on if you're the type of player that will be happy to re-roll another character to play through what's available multiple times. Although doing so is highly enjoyable with the early access, there will be some that wish to instead experience the game fully with one playthrough, which is understandable, and those that will want a full story to play out without waiting for patch updates in between. For me personally, I doubt I'll be picking up the game in early access again anytime soon, and it's not for the reason you may be thinking. The choice to hold on is down purely to just how eye-opening my experience has been while covering the game for this video. Baldur's Gate 3 for me feels like a next level experience when it comes to digital RPG storytelling. You may or may not have noticed, but I've been very careful with what I've revealed in this video, and that's down to wanting to retain the experience that I had, even playing just through its first few hours. Meeting its characters for the first time, experiencing its stories playing out, and getting fully immersed into this game's world feels like a true evolution of the genre which could be for not only D&D fans, but fans of RPGs in general, a complete game changer on release. An already staggering attention to detail on show, coupled with some of the best world building I've ever experienced in an RPG, makes me truly excited to see what such a clearly highly talented development team can ultimately do with such an expansive and lore-rich IP. Even in early access with bugs present, I was completely drawn into the world that Larian Studios are crafting here and was absolutely gutted having to put my journey on pause after hitting the ceiling of what's currently available. The voice acting, the characters, and the environments, even with the game's cutscenes, just emanate with quality, and has put Baldur's Gate 3 for me, as someone who does not consider themselves a really big fan of turn-based RPGs, at the top of the list when looking to the near future of releases within the genre. If you just have to get your hands on the game now, then you'll be surprised with the number of hours you can get from the early access release due to its massive replayability. But for me, I'm going to hold on, as if the full release keeps up the pace of the game as it is so far, that upon the game's release, RPG fans could be in for one of the most impressive RPG experiences ever made, and a journey that once I begin, I will want to see through to its epic conclusion. Thank you so much for watching. Have you played or are looking forward to Baldur's Gate 3? As always, I'm keen to get your thoughts down in the comments. I want to give a big shout out to the channel members for supporting the channel and helping to keep the content coming. If you're interested in supporting the channel with a membership for all sorts of perks including exclusive videos, the info is down in the description. Another big shout out I want to give is to Dev Zaren, who is not only a hilarious content creator well worth checking out, but was a great help with this video, helping me to get an understanding of all things D&D. Thank you again for anyone making it this far into the video, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bandit, but in the final moments just happened. <laughs> Brilliant.